field safe. Doesn't go to South as it gully. Two to Darling, the end of the first over. No wicket for two. Safraz to Darling. Shot by Darling, he beats square leg. Me and dead. Jarvid Meandad, who had such a happy ending to the game yesterday and pulled that miraculous move of bringing on the leg spinner Raja, who completely nonplussed the middle order West Indian batsman, and that was a great move by him, but of course now he's out there with a totally different game. He's got different batsmen. He's filled by... That was for Raja, and it concedes two runs. Imran bowling to Bruce Laird. Good delivery, beautiful outswinger. Imran, full of confidence this morning. And Bruce Laird, yet to get off the mark, looking to run it down through that Lincoln gully area, but. Still a bit of movement off the wicket for Imran. Same as yesterday morning. Covers have been on all night. A bit of moisture there, a bit of sweating. And a good move by Javid Mandad in winning the toss and sending Australia in. And of course, no doubt be hoping for his main strike bowler, Imran Khan, to get an early breakthrough. That was the fellow at the other end yesterday that did the early damage, and that was Safraz. That's a beautiful delivery. They go up in anticipation and this year we're seeing Inman move the ball a lot. We haven't seen it in recent years but he's moving it away and in. That was a beautiful delivery. And that's another one. What an over. Beautifully bowled. Made an over. No wicket for seven. Safraz to Bruce Laird. That's a good shot. Bad ball and Laird. Off the mark with a beautiful square cut. What a way to open your account. Beautiful cut shot from Bruce Laird and reminiscent of those cut shots that we saw him in that brilliant 117 in Sydney a couple of weeks ago against the West Indies. And that's a shot of a man in form. Hit it well, good placement. And of course that short boundary out there square of the wicket. Fourteen. Imran Khan to Darling. It's in the air, he's locked it safe. Desperation. And Darling, tied up by Imran. A little bit fortunate, he got hold of that. Locked it, cover drop. Unusual shot from Darling, and of course this brought about the accurate bowling of Imran. He's frustrated the Australians out there into his fifth over and only five runs coming from it and Darling um, looking for the big drive wasn't quite to the pitch Tahir bowls to Rick Darling it's good shot, it's safe this field a bonus run for Darling There's only a single in that but a bad misfield down a third man by Sakanda and that's something that you cannot afford to do in limited over cricket Ball just going straight down to him and pinning behind it. Tahir bowls to Bruce Laird. Ball! And even better with that flick over square leg by Bruce Laird. Well, he put that away very effectively. Tahir, who had the problem with the no balls yesterday, and this another one, and a good shot by Laird. Right over the top, four runs to that square boundary. Bruce Laird faces Sikanda. And Laird, as he did in the match against the West Indies, the last one the Australians played, showing that he 
he does have a few shots and is willing to play them. Not quite time that, but uh, it's an indication that he's going to try and push the scoring along as is uh, Darling. They're 43 now and we're into the 13th over. That's a very confident appeal. He's gone like before. Laird trapped in front. He seemed to, first of all, not want to play and then got himself into a very awkward position. It's just a question of whether the ball hit him in line with the stumps. If he was playing a shot, that is. And I would reckon that he wasn't playing a shot and therefore could be out to the ball coming in from outside off stump. And that would be why the decision was given. Would have hit the stumps. One for 43. Ah! That's not far away, but um, might just have hit him outside off stump. And that's the one. Sakan to the bowler. Great chapel. Well, the ball had to hit him in line, stump to stump. And the umpire certainly would have been of the opinion uh, there that Great Chapel was outside the off stump. Otherwise, there would have been no reason to give it not out. Tahir to Greg Chapel. And that's through. Hit in the air, but it didn't matter. It was between square leg and mid wicket. Off the middle of the bat. Four runs to bring up the 50. Mightn't have been very far away from mid wicket, but it was far enough. And that's going to be at least two here. As Wazim Raja loses his footing, the batsman from 4 3. So after his uh, initial scare with that leg before, second delivery he faced, Greg Chapel now looking be an ominous form. Feels one out there. Was him right to the man who turned yesterday's match upside down. He was brought on as uh, something of a gamble by Javid Me and that finished up taking four wickets and winning the match. So Tahir here proving quite expensive here. You might see him removed by Javed after this over. That's when we're going to come for three more. So we've already had ten runs in the over. He poached or tried to poach a catch from Imran Khan and in fact dropped a real sitter and it could have cost Pakistan is the match as it turned out. Clive Lloyd who was the batsman and there's another fumble. And so Chapel getting two that time. Knows in a man at deep at wicket. Chapel today has shown a predilection for that to Paul. In fact, we've seen Chapel hook on one occasion. That's very unusual. A bit of juggling going on there out by Mosin. Down the next side, and that's it away. No trouble for Paul. That was pitched just outside next stump, and Chapel really seized the opportunity there to dispatch that towards that short boundary of square leg. I think Ejaz now becoming very predictable. He's aiming at that leg stump and Chapel knows he is. And consequently, he's making up his mind to play the ball away on the leg side. He's positioning himself before the ball arrives. Ejaz not varying it enough. This could be tight. And there's a shot at the stumps and a big appeal. He's given him out. He's run out. Darling going for the quick single there. Not responding quite quickly enough to Greg Chapel's call. And so he hangs his head, and that was a good try at the stumps there from Zahir, fielding at backward point. It was a very quick single indeed, an outside edge down to backward point. And Darling, who's very quick between the wickets, was still unable to beat that return from Zahir. And you can see Darling had his bat in the air. He didn't slide that bat in, Tony. Well, that's the price you pay for that sort of thing. So he's out for 35, 234. Tahir to Greg Chappell. Chappell nicks that one away. Down towards the third man boundary. It's a very long boundary, that one down there, and 
the ball just going into the fence. So four runs there to Chapel. Oh, here looking just a little bit upset. Understandably so, but uh, whilst that was an edge, it was an intentional edge, as you can see. Chapel had every intention of just running that ball wide of the wicketkeeper. He was a little bit fortunate the edge was as thick as it was. Then a contact with the ball might have presented the wicketkeeper. The wicketkeeper was uh, an opportunity, but um, it just went to the right of Asha. in the air and down towards the square leg boundary. Imran Khan won't cut that off. That's a beautiful shot by Greg Chappell. Chipped away off his toes there, just behind square, over the head of Safraz and into the gap for four. It isn't unusual to see Greg Chappell picking up so many runs on the leg side as he has done today. Amador, that one short, it's in the air. But it's gone fine, and once again, Imran having to chase around down there at his fine leg. Have a look at this throw. He's got a beautiful arm. Border coming back. Chapel just a little slow. And so three is up. That was a very wide throw from Imran. Half a man Imran, and again, that unlikely shot from Greg Chapel, the hook. And it came off much to the delight of this crowd who. Of course, remember Greg Chapel in his early days. He started his cricket here, playing for South Australia. That is not a typical Chapel stroke. Here's off spinner Ejaz now, bowling to Greg Chapel, and I think you could say it's a slice of luck for the Australian skipper. Chapel still with a strike, looking for that quick single again. This could be close to shot. The stumps, he must be out. My goodness, that'll be very close. The Pakistanis look very, very upset out there. Well. That must have been very close, my goodness, Frank. That's going to be interesting to look at. Umpire Bailash was in absolutely perfect position. Let's have a look at that uh, decision again. Chapel hesitating there. We keep a, a strap very quick to come across. His throws on its way, and it's making contact now. And I would say that was out by about six inches. Yes, I don't think uh, there's any doubt about this. And my goodness, this could have a big bearing on the match. Now, let's have a look at this closely. That's very well done by the keeper there. Chapel's bat goes down. The ball hits the stumps. In fact, before Chapel's bat's down, and I suspect, too, that he was short of the line. And there's the actual freeze, the moment of truth, with Chapel's bat in the air. Just having a look at uh, the bat there, just off the ground, and the ball just breaking the stumps, and so definitely out. Tahir to Porter. Good shot by Alan Border. Beautiful shot by Alan Border. Well, they put a slip in there, hoping for an outside edge. He played the right shot, but he hit it right in the middle of the bat. That ball went away to the boundary on the offside to bring up the 100. And the Australian flag waves as uh, Darling, a big part of Border, plays this very compact-looking cut. And there they are, still pouring into this ground. A huge crowd out here. Arriving just in time to see Chapel hit one high in the air and Rogers under, he's gone. He's hit it straight down, was in Rogers' throat. No mistake with that catch. And Tar here, absolutely ecstatic. Well, he's conceded one or two runs down there on this occasion, misplacing. And that was pretty wide down the leg side, though, by Ejaz. He just saw Chapel coming, and when he came down the wing, he just pushed it wider. Chapel had to swing at it. And his weight was over towards the offside and he locked it into the air. Three for 103. He jazzed to Porter. Porter drive, and that's a beautiful shot. They might well run five here. They've gone for two, now they're on the third. And Kim Hughes is just a little bit slow. Porter looking for the fourth, but they only ended up with three. Each has to Hughes. That's well played. He's finding a gap there. It's Zahir here again, racing away down towards the third man boundary. The border very quick, coming back to the third, and so three to Hughes. He's off the mark now. And the border, of course, has nine. That's a good shot by Hughes, a beautiful shot, hit straight down the ground, that's a long boundary. 
he was taking the initiative there and bobbing down the wicket and hitting that high over the top of Imran Khan's head. He's not only moving down the wicket, but also moving to the leg side. He chairs to Porter. Porter cuts and finds the gap. Sleeper coming around again, closing down there. Border sweeps high and it's going down towards the boundary. In effect, it'll be six, a big one too. A six there to Border, way over the top of the square leg boundary. Well, the crowd loved that and he didn't half give that some stick. That was an extraordinary shot though because uh, whilst Border hit it extremely hard, he hit it out of the ground almost, it was all forearm. Look at that, he really did clear the whole crowd there. It's probably halfway, halfway down the main street of Adelaide. Another beautiful shot by Border. That one played through the extra cover field. An over-pitched ball there from Ejaz. Four down to the extra cover boundary. And apart from hitting that very well, he bisected the offside field. So this proving to be a very expensive over indeed for Pakistan. 13 runs have come from just four deliveries from Ejaz. Australia looking good at 3 for 136, and this is very much a sacrifice for Alan Border. It's in the air, and he's gone. He's lobbed it up once again to Roger. And so that was a very silly shot by Border. No need. I think he was trying to hit that over the top of the infield once again, and look at that smile. Yes, it certainly was. Well, Border as I said, was getting cheeky, and he got too cheeky here. He just tried to turn that ball around the leg side, didn't make clean contact, and it went into the ever-safe hands of Raja. So, Border makes his way back to the pavilion, and four wickets are down for 136. Use on strike to Safras. Oh, what a good shot. Goldfield is out in the air. He hammered that straight to backward point from Madassa. Well, well, well. It's a careless play out there by the Australians. Off to a good start. Kim Hughes really going after this one, laying the bat on it very solidly, and a good, sharp catch by Madassa at backward point. That's a great breakthrough for Pakistan. Two wickets and two balls, and five for 136 now, Australia. And this Australian innings is becoming reminiscent of yesterday's West Indian mid-order collapse. Safras to Wood. And that goes forward, so that's a good shot. Popped away by Graham Wood, his first bound. It wasn't a bad ball from Safras. Graham Wood popping it away there just through that mid-wicket area. Once it got through, there's no one out there, so a certain boundary. Madassa to Graham Wood. And the first ball from Madassa's punt through cover by Wood for four. Took a chance. Splashed it through the cover region. And Graham Wood hitting his straps. Good shot. The up and over shot. Hitting underneath it and just lofting it over the cover fieldsman and Graham Wood, this inning's now starting to blossom nicely. That was a good shot. No risk whatsoever in that one. Nadassa to continue. Five overs, one for 17. And this, oh, hot court and bowl chance. Through the hand out, knocked it down. It flew down too deep, but off for two. With tremendous power by Rodney Marsh. And I think that Nadassa can thank himself for the cut four runs off. You get about the court and bold. It's been a pure fluke that it has stuck. Shout down the leg side. He's out. He's gone. Caught behind. And as it breaks through again, just as the Australians were looking settled. We can't get these Pakistanis out of this match. Well, Madassa strikes the medium pacer. Rodney Marsh looking for the leg glance. Nashgraf. He's across there, caught two down the leg side yesterday to the right hand as the, of the West Indies side and umpire Dick French, no hesitation whatsoever in putting that finger up. And Rodney Marsh, 
He's out, and Australia six for 169. Mix it, and he put it down, or did it carry? Difficult one, it was low. Dessa appears to think that might have been a chance at the end of the over, but a thick edge. Let's watch that on replay. Vadas has already got two for 25, and he's bowled pretty well. He's found the edge of Jeff Lawson again, and Ashraf putting it down. Sapras to Lawson. He tries it, he misses. Clean bowls him, he tried to hit down the ground, and Sapras strikes again, seven for 176. Well, the old three-card trick set up by Javid Mjendat. He must take a lot of credit for that one, leaving the gaps. No one out. Jeff Lawson fell for it. The Safras, beautiful ball, didn't let Java down, right on line, bowled him. And Lawson out, 776.